When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the saved and earth shall gather over on the other shore. But I'd like to leave this portion of scripture with you, and I'd like us to stir up our minds tonight in uh, relationship to the soon return of the Lord Jesus, because I believe this is the message for this very day, age in which we live. Yet, it's not so often that you hear the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ being preached, but it's very evident, and I believe that we're living in the last of the last days. I believe the prophetic clock of God is about to strike the hour of 12. I haven't the shadow of a doubt about that, and I'm sure many Christians down there will stand with me on this very point. We believe that he's coming back, and tonight our hearts are encouraged and uplifted because of the fact that our Saviour is coming soon. We're soon going to look upon his lovely face. Let's read about it here in Second Peter chapter 3. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Saviour. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. I remember in my own saved days, I remember this fellow one day when we were in conversation with a number of other men and this particular fellow just uttered the very words that we have been reading. He said, well, when I was a child, he says, they spoke about Christ coming back and uh, so on. And he says, now I've come a good bit older. And he says, there's no signs of the coming back of the Lord as the Christian people talk about. And of course, I mean, in his wee puny mind, he couldn't even see that in the sight of the Lord one day was as a thousand years. It's wonderful how we can note these things, that a thousand years in his sight is just as one day. And of course, when I got saved and when I started to read the scriptures and see such wonderful promises in the word of God, then it thrilled my heart to realize uh, when the scales were taken off my eyes, I could see something that was very real to the child of God. And when I considered this, I thought, well, the Lord then, if a thousand years is as one day in his sight, then he's only gone away almost two days. And two days is a very short time in the light of eternity. But the one thing uh, we do notice in verse 10, and it says, but the day of the Lord will come. The day of the Lord will come. That day is coming. And when that day comes, it'll not be just like uh, facing the storms that we have been 
a hearing off over the past few days. It will not just merely be an earthquake. It will not merely be some terrible happening that has happened away at the other side of the world, but it's something that's going to take place over all this world of ours. North, south, east and west, every nation, every kindred and every tongue will know about it because they'll all be involved. I was talking to my wee grandson just last week and I was trying to encourage him to love the Lord and to trust the Lord and I was telling him about Jesus coming back again. And I was saying when the Lord comes back again, you know, there'll be no more Sunday school. You'll not hear anybody more talk about the love of Jesus. There'll be no more mission halls open. The bus men, as I told them, would be closed for all eternity. It never would open again for the preaching of the gospel. All the churches would be closed. And all the mission halls and all the ministers and clergymen would close their Bible for the last time. There'd be no more preaching when that day of the Lord does come. It's a thought. It'll happen. He's coming. He's coming because he said he was coming. If you read, it was his last promise in Acts chapter 2. He said something about it. These were the last words that he said to his disciples. And they had been terribly distressed because they had crucified him. But then all of a sudden, Jesus had made an appearance after some considerable time and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times of the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And, she, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him up out of the sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye, uh, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come again in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. I want to tell you something. It's very easy for me and many Christians I know in this building tonight to believe in the coming back of the Lord Jesus Christ because it has been my experience, the experience which these brothers and sisters had on the day of Pentecost has been my experience. I have experienced a similar uh, filling to what these people had on that very day. I'm not speaking about something of faith. I'm not talking about a second blessing. Praise the Lord, I have them two or three times every day. I'm talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit. And I remember the day when the Lord filled me from the crown of the head to the very soles of the feet, speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. And you know, it makes it so easy for me tonight to believe in my Jesus coming back some of these days because he gave me the very same experience as he gave to those brothers in the day of Pentecost and he said the promise was unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord thy God shall call. And he's coming again. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Let's read on in the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according 
to his promise. Hallelujah. We, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles speaking in them of these things, which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Sometimes for the unsaved mind, it's very hard to understand the things of God because Satan has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine in. And we are reminded of this. If you're unsaved tonight, it's hard for you to understand the things of God. The only way you can understand the things of God is by opening up your heart and inviting Jesus right in there. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things. And of course, when Peter is speaking here, he's speaking to the child of God. And he's speaking to those who are followers and lovers of the Lord Jesus. He says, ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Let us tonight hold fast to the profession of our faith. For he is faithful that has promised. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To be him the glory both now and forever. When he comes again. It's going to be a sad time for those who are left behind, for those who haven't as yet put their trust in him. You know, there's going to be an awful separation. We, look up, we read about it in Luke's Gospel, and we read there where two men shall be in the one bed, and one will be taken, and the other will be left. We read where there will be two women working in the field. One shall be two men working in the field, one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. I want to tell you this, husband, tonight, you'll not hear her voice again, the Christian wife's voice annoying you and being a nuisance to you anymore and when Jesus comes. And I say this to you tonight, wife, if you're tired listening to that godly husband of yours speaking to you about your soul, one day her voice will be silent. And one day there'll be a dividing line. And never, ever again will you hear that voice pleading with you to put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. I know we as Christians are a nuisance. I know we're a problem to the ungodly man and woman, to the drinker, to the gambler. I know it creates within his heart some sort of annoyance and trouble when he lays his head or her head upon their pillow at night. But that's what we're here for. We're the salt of the earth. And we're here as witnesses for him. Ambassadors for the Lord Jesus Christ. We tell you tonight from the bottom of our heart. And on the authority of God's word. That the day of the Lord will come. But why has he not come sooner? Because he is long suffering. Not willing that you should perish. But that you should come to repentance. That's what he's waiting for tonight. He's waiting for you. He wants to complete his church. And then the day of the Lord will come. If tonight you should stretch your hand forth and put it in the hand of Jesus, I believe it could be the very final brick that the Lord is waiting for to complete his church. But he's coming again. And he's waiting because of his long suffering. He can bear to see his soul be lost. He can bear to see your soul going into the caverns of the dam. So he says, I'm waiting for you. Come, he says. All things are now ready. The, bride, the bridegroom says, come. Let him that hears say, come. And whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life freely. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. 
When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning, when the living Christ shall rise, and the glory resurrection share when his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the sky and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there when the roll and the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll and the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder I'll be there Labor for the master from the dawn to set.